Have you ever pondered the apparent irreversibility of most processes in our lives? Why do they typically follow one direction and not the opposite? For instance, why does sugar dissolve when stirred into a cup, but when you move your spoon the other way, it never unstirs itself? Why is it that a sock drawer always requires someone to organize it and doesn't magically arrange itself? And why doesn't a cup of cold water suddenly start boiling without external intervention? These questions might initially appear trivial or unnecessary, as we often take these processes for granted due to our intuitive understanding of them. However, they warrant consideration because there is, in fact, no fundamental law or theory in physics that inherently prohibits these processes from reversing themselves. The same laws that govern the cooling of a cup of warm water also apply when it heats up. Therefore, there must be an additional factor at play, something that tips the balance in favor of certain outcomes, such as the dispersion of gases in a room or the cooling of a cup. This factor is known as entropy, and its influence may be more rooted in probability than in the realms of physics or chemistry. Before delving deeper into entropy, it's beneficial to consider its etymology. The term entropy was introduced by Rudolf Clausius in 1865 when defining the second law of thermodynamics. However, gaining insight into this concept can be enhanced by exploring its origins in classical languages. In Greek, the word for entropy doesn't primarily signify disorder, as one might anticipate. Instead, it pertains to isotropic turning, essentially meaning remaining unchanged, regardless of how you rotate it. In essence, it refers to the multitude of ways something can be altered or transformed while still maintaining its overall appearance. To simplify the concept further, consider an untidy desk. When it comes to organizing a desk, there are specific ways to do it because an organized desk refers to a particular arrangement of items in a particular manner. However, with an untidy desk, there are virtually limitless ways for it to be disorganized. While a stack of papers on the left may appear different from a stack on the right, in the broader context, both are simply instances of disorder, especially when the sole distinction being made is between order and disorder. While the desk analogy helps to illustrate this concept, there are some important nuances to consider before applying it to reality. Let's consider the thesis that greater specificity is less likely in the general case. If we apply this to the table analogy, it means that since an organized table represents a more concrete arrangement, it is less likely to appear randomly than an unorganized table. This notion is consistent with our intuition. If you put your desk in order at the beginning of the week and don't actively maintain it, there's a good chance it will become less organized as the week progresses. Another important point is that in reality, it is not so easy to distinguish between individual elements. Particles at the atomic level are much harder to distinguish than the items on your desk. Even though the various messes of your desk may seem distinguishable to you, this is not the case when you are dealing with millions of particles that all appear to be the same. Perhaps one of the most difficult aspects of understanding the concept of entropy is the scale of the universe. It must be recognized that we have a very limited understanding of the actual size and number of things. While you may have heard comparisons, such as that there are more stars in space than grains of sand on Earth, the actual scale remains beyond our comprehension. The term unfathomable is often used but rarely is it as appropriate as it is in this context. The complexity of reality is truly beyond our grasp. Even if we try to measure complexity by the number of particles alone, you and I, try as we might, will not be able to comprehend the enormity of the universe. Nevertheless, let's give it a try. Let's examine a box comprising two compartments containing a small number of balls. To start, we'll keep it straightforward by placing two identical balls in the box. These balls are free to move between the two compartments. At any given moment, where might these balls be located? Well, there are four possible scenarios to consider. First, both balls could be in the left compartment, which constitutes the first scenario. Second, one ball could be in the left compartment while the other is in the right compartment. This actually encompasses two scenarios as the balls are identical and indistinguishable in this arrangement. If we were to swap their positions in this scenario, 
we wouldn't discern any difference. Finally, all the balls could be in the right compartment, marking the fourth and last scenario. It's essential to note that all these situations are equally probable. Now, let's calculate the probability of finding both balls in the left compartment when there are four identical balls. In this scenario, the number of possible arrangements increases because there are more balls to move around. This can be represented by two to the power of four, resulting in 16 possible arrangements. So the probability of having all four balls spontaneously placed in the left compartment is now one out of the 16 possible arrangements. As the number of identical balls increases, the likelihood of them all being in the left compartment decreases due to the increased number of possible arrangements. Let's continue exploring this concept. As we increase the number of balls to five, the probability decreases to one in 32. Now consider a scenario with 16 balls. In this case, the probability decreases to one in 65,536. Notice how fast the numbers jump. Let's pause for a moment to gain a broader view of the situation. In reality, we seldom encounter such clearly delineated compartments. Objects tend to shift and position themselves freely, resulting in an extraordinarily vast number of potential arrangements, even when dealing with just two objects. Remember the problem of isolating individual particles while observing a million particles at the same time. Well, a million particles is a huge understatement when it comes to representing reality. To put this in perspective, take such a trivial thing as 20 ml of water, essentially the last sip from the bottle. It contains not a million particles, not 10 million, and not a quadrillion. It actually contains more than 10 sextillion particles. Now let's relate this insight to the previous observation. In reality, an ordered arrangement of particles, such as an undispersed gas or unmixed sugar, contrasts sharply with other disorderly configurations, such as in the table example. This increased specificity greatly reduces the probability of occurrence. After all, it takes many particles and a fair amount of luck for an ordered arrangement of particles to manifest itself. When you consider all these factors collectively, it becomes clearer why natural systems tend to gravitate towards disorder. It's not so much that the fundamental laws of physics exhibit a preference for one arrangement over another. Instead, the overwhelming likelihood of disordered states surpasses that of ordered ones to such an extent that, when left to their own devices, natural systems invariably become more disordered. What's truly remarkable is that at the heart of this phenomenon, it's not a law of physics or chemistry at play, but rather a principle of probability. Interestingly, this perspective leads to the intriguing insight that it is theoretically possible for a cup of water to spontaneously transition from a cold state to a hot one. If the trend toward disorder is indeed independent of the laws of physics, there should be no inherent obstacle preventing such an occurrence. And in reality, there isn't. Why then don't we observe such spontaneous transitions frequently? The scale of the systems involved plays a significant role. Returning to the ball compartment analogy, even if we were to reduce the number of balls to just 1,000 and imagine that these balls rearrange themselves a million times every second, we would still need to wait an inconceivable length of time, 300 quaternonagentillion years, to witness all of them residing in the left compartment. This time span vastly exceeds the age of the universe by countless orders of magnitude. Clearly, it wouldn't be a wise decision to wait for such an event to occur. However, hypothetically speaking, what if one were to patiently witness every possible arrangement of every element in the universe? This concept leads us to the profound role of entropy in offering insight into the eventual fate of existence. Indeed, usable energy often requires a specific organized form. An analogy can be drawn with food. All substances consist of molecules, yet not everything is edible. Only substances with molecules arranged in precise configurations can be consumed. In any other disordered arrangement, energy is considerably less practical. Throughout the cosmos, energy is in a perpetual state of transformation from order to disorder, resulting in a depletion of useful energy. This ongoing process suggests that at the inception of the universe, 
energy likely existed in a highly organized state. However, what led to this initial state of order? Was it a mere chance arrangement of particles? Furthermore, what are the consequences if this progression persists? The most probable outcome is what scientists term the heat death of the universe. As the arrow of time propels us forward, each passing day brings the universe nearer to reaching maximum entropy, a state devoid of thermodynamic free energy. This doesn't necessarily entail extreme heat or cold. Rather, it signifies that once everything reaches a state of equilibrium and disorder, there will be no temperature differential to drive thermodynamic processes. Essentially, nothing changes and nothing happens. Time loses its significance. This gradual process is inexorable, but often imperceptible. The universe undergoes minimal changes from day to day, so it is difficult to imagine the possibility of its final cessation. However, this does not mean that we do not notice the recurring pattern of decay that surrounds us in various forms. The fading of memory, aging, death, and the finite transience of our existence all serve as constant reminders of the presence of decay. But in the face of this inevitability, the question arises, what exactly is the point of it all? The concept of the heat death of the universe remains a theory, albeit a theory grounded in the idea that the universe would need to explore all possible arrangements. While the vast numbers and timescales involved are far beyond the scope of a human lifetime, the universe itself possesses the luxury of time and, in a sense, is intertwined with time. It raises the question, could the universe, in the process of exploring countless configurations, stumble upon an orderly arrangement once more? Sure, it might take many quatuor non-agentillion years for something like that to happen, but it can happen. The odds may be astronomically small, yet they remain non-zero. In such an extraordinary event, the universe could potentially reset, and we might find ourselves back at the starting point once again. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel.